It's a big game night in the capital region. You like high school basketball, a couple of headliners, and no better person to talk about the games and who's going to win the games and why than big game James Allen from the Times Union. He'll be out and about tonight. Good morning, big game. How are you? Good, Roger. How are you doing? I got two big games. Which one are you covering? Um, I'm going to be at uh, Shen Colony Boys. There you go. Nice. That, that was the one big game. And a big game. Zach's already predicting victory for uh, Scotia Glenville to knock off Glens Falls tonight, just so you know. Uh, I would never have thought that he would pick Scotia to win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me ask you quickly. Do you agree or disagree with him? I think they have a very good chance. Uh, I was uh, at uh, Glens Falls' last game against uh, Rice last Saturday, and, uh, you know, they, they're off to a great start. They're 14-0, number one in the state. Scotia's won 13 in a row since losing the opener uh, against Sogmans versus Free Academy, and, you know, shoot the three ball right now very well with a trio of guys that are knocking them down, and it's going to be imperative to do that and uh, shoot the shoot the ball well from the perimeter and, and uh, limit the glass balls in, in transition. Obviously, is, a, is a big, going to be a big key for them. Can Can Gerard still get his forty and Scotia still win the game? Uh, I think they can, but I mean, the thing is, I mean, they've been uh, they've been really getting. Scoring from three guys, so those three that I just, uh, you know, that, that, that I talked about with their with their threes, uh, which is uh, Corker, DeGraff, and Reed, and, and Martin. Uh, they've been they've done the bulk of the scoring all year long, and they've done the bulk of the scoring from the perimeter. So yeah, I, I could see a scenario where Gerard would get his points, but uh, you know, the last time they met, we know what happened. So they're going to have to, you know, have to try to keep him in check, and uh, and that's not an, an easy thing to do because he's really playing very well right now. And they got a guy by the name of Tony Green that's uh, known for his football exploits, but he's a pretty good basketball player, and he's really uh, emerged as a, as a force inside. And uh, they don't have anybody. I don't think. I don't think so. Has anybody that can deal with him? So that's going to be uh, interesting to see how how that works out. How they defend him because as, as, as lethal as Joe Girard can be, Tony Green is pretty tough to deal with. Especially, especially when he gets out in transition, he's he is a really tough guy to defend. Well, my guess is that Jim will be rocking tonight. That's a good one in the foothills. And then the game that you're going to be at was the other game that we have pumped up here this morning. Uh, should be a good one tonight, too. What's your take on who's winning between Shenandoah, unbeaten in the Suburban, and, and here comes Colony playing really well, right? They beat they beat Schenectad, and then they beat Shaker. Uh, and starting to really play like a lot of people thought they would at the beginning of the year. What kind of matchup do you expect tonight at Shen? Well, I expect a very good one, Roger, and you just said it. I mean, Colony is on a nice run. Um, got off to kind of a slow start. They lost uh, back-to-back games early in the season in the, in the league. They lost a, another game to Albany Academy that they were very much in throughout the game, and uh, you know they've really picked it up, and, and their level is right now is the best that it's been all year long, and Shenton's been a little bit, uh, you know, they lost to West Shenny uh, out, out in Syracuse, and then uh, they played uh, Green Tech on Sunday, and uh, they had their hands full. They were only up by one with uh, a couple of minutes to go in that game. They wound up winning by by six. But, um, you know, Colony, it's imperative that they uh, stay out of foul trouble. That's easier said than done against Shen because Shen's going to move the ball. They're going to whip it around in transition, you know, in the perimeter. They're going to, you know, try to get, uh, opportunities in the half court game, and, and I think that it's really going to be important for Colony to stay out of foul trouble because you know they're really only playing six players, and you know you get a couple of guys you know in foul trouble, which is very easy for for Shen. They're going to play you know ten to twelve guys, and they're going to try to attack, and, and you know they'll, they'll certainly go in transition, but Shen's not as as active a, a team in transition, and they don't shoot the ball as well from the perimeter as they have in recent years. So uh, they, they're more dependent on the half-court game. I'm very interested to see the, the matchup inside with Chris Caddy and Mole and how that works out. And, you know, I, I think if, if Kyle Lee can get uh, some contributions fr- from guys other than Mole, I mean, guys like Molson and, and, you know, a few others like that and, and uh, Vescucci, uh, I think they can definitely win the game, and I think it's going to be a very interesting game, and I, I certainly think Colony's got a very good chance to, 
and uh, Shen's uh, winning streak in the league. Yeah, I think Waterman, Abar, those those two guys, and uh, will we'll need to play well tonight. It should be should be a great game, Zachary. Yeah, I I I can't uh, predict a winner in my mind. I, I actually. Uh, know these teams pretty well from working with Dags basketball in the summer and and having worked with both these teams. I can't come to a prediction, James. Can you? I mean, who who comes out on top tonight? Well, you know, Zach, I, I've been thinking about this one, and I, I really think if Colony can play at the level that they play that right now, I, I think they can do it. I, I really do. But you know, they've been. They've been all over the map this year. I mean, they've been. There's been times where I thought, "Wow, you know, they look." You, know, you look at some of the, some of the recent performances, you say, "Geez, this is what we expected." But then, then you think back to some of their struggles early in the year, where they really didn't look very, very good in those, in those back-to-back losses against Hogan and Bethlehem. I, I'm I'm really interested to see how this one plays, and I really think it's important for them to, to defend because. You know, where they've gotten themselves into trouble has been they've had lapses and they've gotten themselves into foul trouble or they've got themselves in the, in the situations in those two games where they got behind early and they had to fight their way back. And to their credit, you know, you look at their recent performances and they've, they've been able to get out and get the lead and they've been able to kind of dictate how the game is being played. And they certainly, when their offense is going and they can spread the floor, Way that uh, very few teams double A can, and they have those five options really on the on the court. There are very few teams that really have five viable offensive options. They do, and when they're really playing well and they get everybody involved, they're difficult to deal with. Yeah, I think Colony wins the game tonight. I, I will make that prediction. I think I think they're going to win this game tonight. I think the, if they if they play, and, and again, I, I I have not seen Shen, so I will I will admit that. But I have seen Colony and the ups and the downs. They play the way they have been playing in the last couple of games. I think they're going to be. I think they're going to win this game tonight. The, my, my, my only thought here, uh, and James, you you tell me what you think about this. When winning is in your DNA, and winning is part of the culture, as it is at Shen, they find ways to win those close games where Colony is still trying to get to that level. Does that make sense, James? Well, certainly does. Uh, you know, Zach, and you think about. You know, Shen has had their had their moments this year. I mean, you know, they they did win. They they won. They found a way to win against Schenectady when Schenectady had certainly had an opportunity to win. Uh, Bethlehem wanted to be in an eight point game, but it was right there. Um, and then the Green Tech game the other day, they didn't play their best, but they found a way at the end of the game to win the game. And there's certainly validity to that. The interesting element is this team is you know they're still trying to find their way. I mean, let's remember that. There's a lot of guys that uh, graduated from these last two teams that they did, that had that got to the state uh, final four, including the one that won a couple years ago. Uh, you know, you certainly have a guy in Hicks who's been around. You know, he's in a different role now. He's the lead guy. That's a caddy's got a lot of experience. But then you get a lot of these other guys like Jaya Benson and and some of them. They they've been role players that have sort of stepped into bigger roles this year. And, you know, I'm interested to see, and I think it's imperative for Colony not to put themselves in the position where they have to chase. If they are close and they can, and they can play and, and stay out again, foul trouble I think is going to be such a big element in this game because when Colony is really playing well and they can avoid that foul trouble and they can get out and, 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 and they can kind of dictate how the game is being played, I'm interested to see if Shank can come back. If, if they are down in the fourth quarter, because Shen's been able to be the front runner that they've uh, been the last few years, and that's the reason why they've got over, uh, the, I think, the, the winning streak up to 54 now in the league. Uh, the reason why they, they've been able to make teams chase them, and uh, they shoot the foul shots pretty well, and it's tough when you're on the road to have to try to come back. So I think it's important for Colony to get out to the lead and, and, and kind of force the issue that way. Well, should be a great game. Fun night. Those two games that we just highlighted will be uh, the two, the two, the headliners uh, yeah, this for this right. night. Just a couple other ones <laughs> we didn't mention: uh, Fort Ann and uh, Argyle playing in the and the Adirondack League will be bringing us to one of the two state ranked teams and in, in the in the D's. And then girls wise, uh, Shaker at Columbia, both thirteen and one. Columbia lost last week at Chen, looking to rebound, and uh, that one has big implications in the suburban blue. 
That's the marquee girls game of the night. You are 100% right. I forgot about Shaker and, and Columbia girls. We'll, we'll add that uh, to our list of things to shoot tonight. We'll have all the highlights for you. News Channel 13 Live 11. We'll read about all the, the games tonight, including your headline game. Uh, Shannon Colony tomorrow in the Times Union and uh, pump up the high school sports scene. We do it every Friday with big game James Allen in this time slot. Big game. Have a great weekend. Thanks for a few minutes. Appreciate it, Roger.